Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Tariq Urabi, and I'm a product manager here at Vaden. And with me is Yusuf Kantonen, who is the UX team lead. And today we are very excited to talk to you about the topic of theming and styling Vaden applications using low code and pro code. Uh, just a few housekeeping rules before we begin. Uh, all lines are muted during the webinar. You can ask questions during the webinar using the question panel in the lower right of your screen. If we can't answer your question right away, we will get back to them uh, towards the end of the, of the webinar. And uh, we will also send you a link with the slides to the, to the recording within 24 hours after uh, the web webinar finishes. Probably most of you are already familiar with Vaden, but just for those of you who are new here, Vaden is a company on a mission to make the process of building and modernizing Java web applications uh, successful, quick, and cost-effective. And because we know that different applications and different teams may have different approaches and requirements, Vaden offers two proven frameworks that you can choose from to get the option that uh, best suits your needs. So the first framework is Vaden Flow, which empowers Java developers to develop Java applications or web applications purely in Java without writing uh, any HTML and JavaScript. And the second framework, Hilla, is uh, for teams that need to integrate a TypeScript, reactive TypeScript front end with a Java backend. And whichever of these two options you choose, your team chooses, you can get faster development and faster time to market while also delighting and uh, making your users happy. In today's agenda, we have uh, few different topics. I'll start by giving some uh, brief updates about the recent product uh, capabilities or additions that uh, Vaden has introduced recently. And then uh, Yuso will continue with giving some practical tips and examples about stylings. He will he'll cover, uh, prov provide some examples of custom themes and also discuss uh, theme uh, add-ons and some practical styling techniques that could be useful for you while styling your uh, Vaden applications. But to begin, let's start with uh, uh, two polls, quick polls. So first, we would like to know, uh, we would like you to answer, uh, if you go to the lower right uh, side of the screen, you will find the polling tab, and there you'll find the first question, who is involved in deciding uh, and implementing styles for your application built with Vaden? Is it UI designers, UX designers, developers, or there are other personas as well? So if you please choose one of these options. So most options so far describe developers and product owners, UI designers, and followed by UX designers. And the second, questions we, the second question we have is like, what challenges do you face in styling your applications? Is it working with CSS? Yeah, so most people described so far described working with CSS, ensuring consistency across a single application, also fine tuning a particular component application. Those are among the most uh, challenging parts uh, that you face in styling uh, your applications. Yeah, hopefully we can cover, cover some of those challenges. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure we will. All right. So let me start with a brief uh, description of some product updates. And specifically, I would like to speak about five uh, different aspects of our recent product roadmap. The first is the theme editor. The second, component locator, simplified theming, and the design system publisher, and uh, the Vaden design system Figma uh, library. So to start with, the theme editor is a new low-code tool that was introduced uh, with 24.1, which is released today. And this tool uh, allows you to edit the theme of Vaden application without actually having to write CSS code. So this tool is uh, integrated in the developer tools, which you find in the lower right corner when you're developing in a Vaden flow application. And you can use this tool to change the 
the look and feel of your application. So you can change, select a certain component, you can change its color, font size, and do much more without actually having to directly edit the code. And under behind the scene, this tool actually uh, implements the changes, the necessary changes in real time in the code. So it's you can see them in the preview while you're developing, while you're using the tool, but also you can uh, view them in the code itself. And another also very useful tool that was introduced recently in Baden 24, actually, uh, but it's also relevant for theming, uh, which is the component locator. And this is also something that's integrated in the developer tools, and you can use it to identify any component in the UI and define the corresponding code in your application. So you select component in the UI and the, the corresponding source code in the IDE is opened. So you can find where the component is declared and also where, when, where it is added to the UI. This is useful in general for many purposes, but it's also very relevant for styling. If you want to start specific component and you say you want to add a class name to it, then you can use this tool in order to locate where this component is declared in the source code. And another also addition that was introduced in Vaadin 24 is a simplified theming approach. And uh, this theming up simplified approach is based on uh, the part selector. And as you may know, Vaadin components employ an HTML feature called the Shadow DOM. And this Shadow DOM has the advantage of isolating Vaadin components or the internals of them uh, from the surrounding page to avoid conflicts uh, in the styling and to simplify the internal implementation. So that's the good side of it. But the bad side of it is that styling the internals of Vaadin components become actually uh, quite challenging. Or traditionally, it has been quite challenging. But now, with the introduction of the part selector, the internals of Vaadin components can be easily targeted uh, for styling. And, it and this usage of part selector removes the need for uh, adding specific style sheets to target the internals of, of Vaadin components. Then in association with this simplified theming approach as well, uh, there is uh, now uh, uh, an advanced improved theming documentation. So now we have a comprehensive list of all the selectors that are used for Vaadin components. If you go to the documentation Vaadin.com, you can see that each Vaadin component documentation page has a styling tab that contains a list of all the CSS selectors their parts, the elements, the state attributes, and so on, that can that you can use to style those components. Next is the design system publisher, which is, well, it's, it's not entirely new, but still I think it's uh, worth highlighting in relation to discussions about styling and theming. And the design system publisher is a commercial tool that is part of Vaadin Prime and Ultimate commercial subscriptions. And this tool enables you to create a documentation website for your own Vaadin-based design system. And this documentation website then would include all the components, the theme features, UI patterns, and guidelines that your application UIs are composed of. And this in turn makes it easier for your developers and your designers to work, side, to work together to keep track of the, all the features that are available in your UI platform how they look, how they can be used, and so on. Last but not least, also I'd like to draw attention to the Vaadin Figma library, and which designers can use to create pixel-perfect UI designs and prototypes. These prototypes are easy to use for develop, are easy for developers to implement using the popular design tool Figma, and also using the official Vaadin Figma libraries. And uh, the component in this library use the default Lumo styling, and you can adapt the Lumo styling to suit your own branding and vision. And this Figma library includes typography, color, and other visual style, and also configurable components that cover the same components which are available uh, for developers as well. Before giving the mic to you, so one final polling question I would like you to again answer is, which of the following uh, new Vaadin styling capabilities that are described that I've described just now do you plan to use in the next few months? Theme editor, component locator, part selector, 
new documentation or none of the above. So the detailed documentation of styling followed by component locator and also the theme editor seem to be the quite popular. All right, with that, I give the mic to Yoso to continue his presentation. Thank you, Tarek. That's, that's very helpful. And I'm um, actually circling back to some of those features and giving, giving more like practical examples on how to make use of those. So uh, I was thinking of starting with uh, showing a few examples of, of Biden because we every now and then get a, get a question that isn't like Lumo, how, how it looks, and can you actually customize your, your visuals of your Biden applications? And here's a few examples I collected. Uh, some uh, that our UX designers have created for for our clients. So here's a, a styled application. Here's a bit different aesthetic uh, on, on, again, a, a Varden application. This one is a little bit more minimalistic style, but again, and uh, the fourth example is quite, quite heavily styled and, and like uh, adapting to the customers customers branding so indeed you can can style anything and you can uh, style the components quite extensively as well then i wanted to briefly mention the team add-ons we have uh, so this can serve as a, as a good starting point for defining your own own application team so uh, what of course is that uh, these are made for Varden 23, but we are upgrading those to Varden 24. They do work on Varden 24 already, but there might be, they are not like fully uh, tested, tested yet. Uh, those theming add-ons are available through the, through the Varden directory. So these are loaded as dependencies to your project. Then you define a parent team for your application, and then you can uh, start making more customizations on top of these add-ons. So you have the Lumo team, you have a team add-on on top of that, plus your custom styles. Here's a screenshot of how the Lumo styles starting uh, looks by default. Our first team add-on is called Breeze. So this is a, like a tailwind inspired styling, uh, pretty similar to, to Lumo in a way, but has a different aesthetic on the input fields and, and a bit lighter in, in a way. The next one is called Parity. Uh, this is a little bit more compact and, and like a uh, stronger uh, contrast compared to the uh, Lumo, Lumo team. Uh, it's based on the Coleman Sars uh, design system and their, their visual guidelines. And a third one uh, we have is a carbon team. So this is an adaptation of the IBM's uh, carbon design system. Uh, we also have a, a material tree team in the in the making. Haven't yet finished that one. It's probably going to be an add-on add-on as well. The Google specs around it uh, have not uh, like been fin finalized yet, so it's a bit of a moving moving target still, and and not like fully complete. So landing sometime sometime soon. Then we are actually getting to the uh, beef of the presentation, which is the like different ways to style your application and the components and etc. Here uh, I'm showing a typical uh, project structure for a Vadim, Vadim project. So you have your CSS styles, CSS files in the uh, front end directory. Then you have uh, Java files divided into uh, views and components in the, in the source directory. And also at the end of the presentation, I'll be talking about uh, including web fonts. So those typically are placed in the uh, meta -inf resources directory. I've uh, structured the presentation so that I'm showing some code snippets and examples on the uh, examples of code on the left side, and the screenshot on the right is is uh, updating to match with the with the styles shown or the techniques shown. So uh, the first recommend what I would recommend to start with when when styling Varian applications is first taking a look into the uh, variables in the Lomo 
theme. Well, the variables are also known as CSS custom properties. So this uh, gives you some level of customizability of the things that we have uh, explicitly made customizable uh, through, the, through the variables. So this includes any colors used in, the, in, in your application or in the, in the Luma theme. There's uh, spacing and sizing variables, border radiuses, etc. Um, using the variables ensures uh, good consistency in the visuals, so you don't go defining in uh, like pixel values every time you need to need to set some size or colors in hex values. So then uh, your styling can can be uh, very consistent. You don't have a dozen shades of blue if, if as as would happen if you were picking those colors as you as you went along or any any time you needed a a new color, you would just pick a new hex value. So in general, I would uh, suggest to avoid uh, pixel and pixel values and hex colors. And whenever you feel the need for using those, introduce a new variable or pick one of the existing variables in your, in your product, in your application. So uh, how to discover the different uh, variables that are built in into the Luma. So first of all, the styling documentation is a good resource documentation for, for Luma. It lists all the all the uh, variables that exist in the Luma team. So here's a screenshot on the on the right on how the documentation looks. Another way is uh, using uh, the inspector of your uh, favorite browser, focusing the HTML elements or the root element of the of the DOM, and that would show a list of uh, variables or custom properties, as we see on the right. Here we have a bunch of bunch of colors uh, available throughout your whole application. So uh, let's start going through the examples on what you can do with those variables. First, I have a path at the top uh, with uh, front-end themes, demo, and style CSS, which is kind of the base uh, level of your styles. So it's in the in the public public scope uh, applicable for your whole whole application. Here I have a HTML tag and within that HTML tag, I could uh, define that, okay, I want my Lumo primary, primary color to use this uh, color value. And that changes all the uh, blue colors that I had in the, in the application, in the buttons, in the fields, in the checkboxes, in the grids to be a purple shade. These uh, colors come in a few different shades. So we have the primary color, then we have 50% uh, and 10% opacity variants of that color, and also a uh, primary text color variable, which uh, ensures a proper contrast on a, on a white background when, when using this colored text. Uh, the other ones that exist out of the box in, in Lumo are the, are the success uh, color, error color, color, contrast colors. Uh, so you can add add more if you need need more. The warning color color is being uh, introduced in in uh, latest version of body or Lumo team. Here's a few more things you can configure with variables. So I'm changing the border radius uh, of to be slightly sharper. So if I'm switching between the is we can say, see the uh, border, button borders becoming more sharp. Also, we can tweak the sizing variables to make the whole UI a little bit more compact. So those are quite quite common things that can be configured in the with the variables. Um, here I'm showing a way of introducing your own variables. So the syntax is that the CSS custom properties of variables start with this dash dash. And then you can uh, freely define your own, own name for the variable. Uh, it's recommended to uh, kind of separate the Lumo ones from the ones that you have introduced yourself, just to keep it clean that which are already bound to the components and in the team. And uh, of course, the ones that you're introducing yourself, you need to make sure you're using those somewhere. So it keeps, keeps, helps keeping it a little bit more organized. Uh, here, for example, I have added two 
hex colors, one for admin, one for user, a color for the checkbox background that could be could be used. Uh, another feature that is bound to those variables is the light and dark teams. So all the Luma, Luma teams have support for the dark team out of the out of the box. And you can add your own team variables. Quite common use case is to add a like a high contrast mode uh, for your application. And another use case could be that you can uh, white label your your application. For example, if you had a logo at the top, if that is set in CSS, you could set that as a variable the path uh, to that image. Or if you have a like primary color uh, that is customized to the to the user or the other setup of the application that could be easily tweaked with the variables in the sample we can see that even though we changed the uh, primary color to be purple it didn't apply to the dark mode and that is uh, because the uh, same variables need to be defined again in the scope of the dark team this is because the uh, primary color needs to be slightly different on dark mode compared to the light mode to ensure again uh, proper uh, contrast with the with the background. So here's a, a sample how you define those variables again in a scope of a dark team. And now we have our buttons and, and elements also uh, purple also in the in the dark mode. Then a next styling technique is something that Tarek already mentioned, so the uh, team editor. And now I'm uh, giving an example of styling components. First, we are doing it with the, with the team editor and then directly in, in CSS in a, in a moment. So uh, the team editor has uh, the capability of selecting an individual button, in this case, or any component. And you can decide if you want to style uh, this particular instance of a button. So that's the local mode. Or you could uh, say that you want to style all the buttons globally in your, in your application. Here we have selected a primary button. You have a few, few controls, color pickers, and sliders. Uh, we can see that uh, changing the color with the color picker changes this particular button. To go further, we could select a text field, and this time we are uh, styling the global uh, styles for the text field, so all text fields in, in one go. Uh, in, adding, in addition to colors, we can enable a border on the text fields, we can change the radiuses, we can change the sizing and padding of the component, so it's not only limited to picking, picking different colors for the, for the components. Um, the next example is styling a checkbox. Again, we are doing uh, it globally. So we are styling one single checkbox, uh, the stage of it, and that will affect all the checkboxes in the, in the whole application. So this will immediately output uh, normal, regular CSS real time in, in, in your application style. So it's very useful in that. Uh, Unfortunately, it doesn't yet at this point support all the possible components, all the possible uh, variants you have you can have in the in the uh, components. Also, what you see here, uh, the checkbox size, background color, border radius, border width, etc. Those are typically uh, variables, so you can tweak the same things using the uh, CSS variables. But this is of course very like nice that you get the immediate response when when tweaking and trying out different different values. Then uh, for writing custom styles for your for your components, I would recommend starting with uh, by reviewing the existing style variants of the components because quite many of the components already have built in team variants and those are can be found in the in the documentation. Here uh, as a screenshot I have an example of uh, accordion component. On the top left, we have the like default, how it comes without any team variants. On the right, we have the field variant of the component. Also, the position of an icon is behind a variant, so that's already like built into the component. 
And on the bottom row, we can see that there is a compact variant of the component. And all of those different building variants can be combined to uh, create different, different results. So that's often a good way of, of starting to style a component. Then uh, we'll need to talk a little bit about Shadow DOM. Uh, Tarek already basically introduced the uh, pros and cons, or mentioned that there's pros and cons. So having the Shadow DOM, uh, from styling point of view, it's a it's, uh, bit of a hurdle we need to handle. This is basically how you had to do it in, in uh, Varin 23. Now Varin 24 introduced the part selector. Um, you can still use the way, same way of styling, so that still works in Varin 24 as, as before. Um, I have a, a, like a representation of the DOM structure of a Varin checkbox here on the right. So uh, there's basically two scopes. The public scope is uh, what you would target with regular CSS from anywhere in the application. And then within the uh, components, we have the shadow root. So the shadow DOM parts are scoped in a way that they can, they need their own uh, style sheet need, need to be targeted using the part selector. So there's no, the regular CSS selectors don't pierce this uh, border between the public DOM and the, and the shadow DOM. There's few, tips and tricks how you can inject things into the into the shadow DOM. So variables, as we uh, started with, those can be uh, also re read in, in inside the shadow DOM. So if you some, define something in the HTML in the root of the root of your application, you can use the same values in the shadow DOM. Sometimes that can be used uh, to change the visibility of things by uh, altering the display property of an element so you can change the value of the of the uh, uh, variable outside the shadow dom and the effects will be rendered inside the shadow dom another way is to set a team variant for the checkbox as uh, that would be in inherited or propagated to all the all the child elements of that that component anyways here it's a, it's a code snippet for uh, targeting a checkbox part uh, of the button checkbox component. So you would do it in the in the components directory in your team and have a style sheet called button checkbox CSS. So the name of the CSS file needs to correspond to the name of the uh, web component. Then you have uh, ability to target the host element, which is the button checkbox. Uh, we can say that uh, if it has an attribute checked, then we want to style the part checkbox and say the background color to be using that Luma contrast 80% variable. Now with the parts, uh, we don't need to define the styles in the scope of one and checkbox. We can do it anywhere in the application. And now we target it with uh, one and checkbox the attribute checked, and then we have the part checkbox. So with the same DOM structure, this is how you would write the styles. And then you define the background color exactly the same as before. So uh, this gives you much more freedom in organizing the CSS files in any way, any way you want. Uh, also in Modern 24, number of the component uh, DOM structure have been restructured. Uh, the goal of that is to make them more accessible uh, by, by screen readers and other, other techniques. And also uh, the side effect of that is that they become easier to style when, when less elements are inside the shadow dome. So how to, how to find the elements that can be targeted and how, what can be styled? Uh, first way is looking up the documentation as, as Tarek showed. So we have an updated uh, styling documentation for each component. So here the checkbox documentation, for example, mentions the checked uh, state. Uh, so that's targeted with the attribute. And then uh, the checkbox box, which is a, a part 
checkbox. So you can combine those together to define the styles for the uh, checkbox in a checked state. The other way is to uh, use the browser inspector lookup uh, the part attribute and use that as a as a target. Then uh, again to a, a code sample. So now we're trying to style all the components in, in one go. Here in the sample view, we have a text fields or two text fields. We have date pickers and a combo box. And we would like to style all those in one go and keep the styling consistent. So looking uh, from the documentation or using the inspector, we can identify that there's a, a part called input field. And that's what we would like to target. Uh, the first way, there's like three alternative ways of targeting uh, that part. So the first one takes any element that uses the part input field or targets any element. In When doing it like this, you need to be sure that no other elements that you didn't want to style contain a part that is called, called the same. Uh, basically, we don't reuse those uh, part names, so it's pretty safe to do it like this. But with with uh, custom components or custom-made components, it, it can be different. Um, the middle sample shows that instead of targeting all the components that have the part, you can explicitly define that, okay, I want a text field, number field, select combo box and date picker that include a part input field to have these styles. The downside of this is that uh, once you start having uh, a lot of components and styling the different states of those components, that gets pretty pretty lengthy in, in CSS, but more explicit. Then the last option is to uh, define a, a just a CSS snippet, set, put that in a, in a separate file, say that uh, the host of this, uh, basically the root of this component, if it has a part input field, then do these styles. And then import that CSS style sheet for different components. So then you would import it for one in text field, number field, select and combo box to get the styles. This is the safest option and, and kind of gives you most, most uh, explicit uh, setting and also also freedom in, in uh, picking the ones you once you want to start so then there's no no need to like repeat yourself again and again how to now I'm just using the simple simple selector in the in the example um, how we if, we if we want to make the text fields to have a border instead of a field style we can uh, set the background color to be the uh, base color which is the same as, as your application background color. And uh, here I'm showing using the box shadow property. In Vardin 24, uh, the fields all nowadays have a border. So you could uh, use that. So the box shadow techniques is, technique is already a little bit outdated. And the output would, would be what we see on the right. So it's fairly straightforward. One thing to be aware of is the different states of the components. So you should be sure that you're not overriding the hover styles or focus styles or invalid, or disabled or read-only styles and all the possible combinations of, of those. So you could have a uh, in focused invalid state for a component. Um, how you can do that is uh, you say that any component that is invalid and has the part input field, then use these uh, box area and background color values instead. So here I'm changing the uh, color from contrast 20% to Lumo error color or contrast 10% on the disabled. This uh, can be improved uh, slightly. This is not uh, as straightforward, but it has has some benefits. So in the HTML, we can define new variables for the border and for the background. And in the component, you define that uh, 
in the default state, it uses those values as is. In the invalid state, instead of uh, overriding the background color, for, for example, we are overriding the uh, variable setting set or connected to that background color. In this given example, it might not make sense, but if you want to reuse the same background color or border color for, say, checkboxes, then it will be quite neat that you have connected it to these variables. So the same variables are reused throughout your whole application. And, and then later on, you could change a single variable and that will affect all your components in, in one go. So that's quite powerful in, in that way. Hope that I haven't, haven't completely lost you <laughs> at this point. So that was about uh, styling components. Now we're getting into styling views. Uh, so as, as an example, we might take the filtering area at the top of the view that has the inputs and let's set a background color to that area. Um, so the first technique or the first way of achieving this is uh, going into Java code, adding class names that can be used to target the uh, CSS changes or the scope to CSS. Um, it's recommended to uh, organize your view styles separately from, from the components just for clarity that okay you have your like repeatable things the component styles in one place and any view styles in, in another place. So here we are adding a class name for the whole view, uh, a class name employees view and for the filters area we are adding a class name filter layout. How you, how you would uh, target those in your styles? Uh, you could do it directly from the style CSS, but it's, as, as I said, keeping, keeping it clean or, and organized, it's recommended to add a new style sheet, place it in, the, in a views folder, maybe, or directory, uh, call it employees view, and within that file, you have this uh, class selectors employees view, that contains a filtered layout and a background color for that. And now again, I'm using a, a variable, should be Lumo contrast 5%. And now we can see the uh, background color of that area changing to be this light gray. Uh, now that we have defined our, our employees view CSS file, we need to also import that file in our uh, base styles. It's basically recommended that that you load all the styles for all of your application and don't try to like load and unload styles so just make sure that you're scoping scoping the styles clearly to avoid any any issues with the styles leaking to other components of views another alternative for uh, styling styling parts of the views is using the lumo utility classes so these are introduced in 23.1. These are helpers for styling, styling parts of the UI from, from Java code. Uh, they are enabled in a new project by, by default. So you can use them, use them in, in your project already. Uh, now in the uh, code sample in, in Java code, instead of adding class names, you would, uh, or oh, this is still adding a class name, but based on the enum. So you don't add a, a custom string uh, filter layout and call that in the CSS, but directly you can add a class name, which is Luma utility, then dot, uh, background color, or background dot contrast 5%. So this is quite useful in, uh, if you don't remember all the, uh, team variables on top of your mind or don't want don't want to use time looking those up from the documentation in uh in that ides can autofill those values so now we set a background color to that this works exactly as as doing it in it from the css there's some other things we can also do with the luma utilities you can configure the paddings of this to be slightly more compact or you can, uh, for example, change the display property to flex. Okay, it was flex before, but change the uh, direction to be column. 
So uh, my personal kind of preference is that I'm often tweaking the paddings, gaps, uh, layouts, doing any layout changes using the Luma utilities. And then any uh, more customer styling I'm, I'm writing in, in CSS. But as you can mix and match those two techniques as you, as you want. Uh, here's a, a comparison. So this is doing the exact same things in CSS, and this is doing the same things in uh, using the Lumo utility classes. Uh, it's good to note that you can't do everything with the Lumo utility classes. So for example, setting a background uh, image to create a gradient, there's no conf configuration in the Lumo utilities to do that. So that's something you need to do with custom, custom CSS. Then I'm getting to the uh, last last topic, which is uh, custom fonts and icons. So it's quite common need to uh, include, especially if, if matching a branding of a of a uh, organization to have their custom font in the application. The fonts can be loaded as as web fonts uh, or served locally in the project, and the same applies for font icons. And in the, in addition, a uh, Icon set can be generated from, from SVG images. Again, uh, the font stack that the application uses is, is defined as a, as a variable by default. It looks like this. And uh, how to define your own custom font. Uh, you import the font from an, from an uh, in this case, from Google servers with the import. Uh, with the import like this, then in the uh, HTML scope, in addition to your default stack, you're saying that use the ASAP condensed as the primary option, and then fall back to the to the other ones. So this is the easiest way of including a font. Now on the right, we can see the font changing to this more condensed font. How to do that? Uh, how to sort the fonts locally in your project? Uh, you need to have the web font files. They typically are WOF and WOF2 formats and a CSS file uh, with the font face uh, annotation. So that defines that the font family called ASAP condensed is uh, loaded from these two files. Uh, you would typically place those in the, in the meta inf directory and then in your uh, somewhere in the in the in your application, you need to uh, load the ASAP condensed the file that has the font face declaration. And then in your uh, application styles again the Lumo font family variable. So you want to uh, define that your your application uses this font family. This is not nothing really specific to Vardin. This is how you how you do it. In, in web applications in, in general, but just like where where do you put the files in in a modern application? If you have only the uh, true type files, the TDF files, or any other formats, those would need to be first converted into into a web font format. There's a bunch of services for that, which also generate you the font face declaration. Then uh, icons can be included in exactly the same way. Here we are including material icons. Uh, they are defined, the font family is defined. There's some uh, default sizes, etc., that you can define. Then you can create uh, helpers in Java for rendering those icons. So here we have a span, which always gets the uh, material icons class name. And it's probably a good idea to also in the same go, introduce an area label for accessibility purposes on those icons. So then you can use this, this method to render your icons. You can also replace the uh, icons inside the uh, Vardin components. It takes a little bit of tinkering, but it's, it's possible as well. Another way of including the icons is generating an icon set based on the SVG icons, we have a tool on the button doc site that generates you a JavaScript file containing the SVG uh, coordinates for, for each icon. 
and then it also generates you a Java helper for uh, initiating those those icons in your in, in your application or using those from Java. And that's uh, everything I wanted to cover. So we went through uh, locating and configuring variables in the Lumo team. We covered uh, light and dark team and adding adding new team variants. Styling uh, components using the using the in-app team editor and doing it with CSS. We went through styling views, uh, what, what, how to organize your styles, where, where to put those. The Lumo utilities as an alternative way of, of doing uh, styling tweaks from directly from the Java code. And then we talked about uh, custom fonts and, and including custom icons in your application. Initially, we started with an application looking like this, and we ended up with something that looks like this. So a bunch of different techniques and, and, and rather small increments towards a different, different look and feel. And as the last thing, uh, I wanted to mention that if, if all of this feels very overwhelming and a bunch of uh, weird CSS properties are configured here and there, we can, of course, uh, we have people to help you help you uh, working with the styles of your application. Um, so I am uh, working in the, in the UX team. We have four designers who very much know Vardin inside out, have worked with the previous version and the latest version of, of the Vardin. But in uh, every UX designer uh, in, in Vardin is able to do research tasks, uh, do design work, uh, design for the not only the visuals, but also how the how the application's user experience should be, how the views are, are structured, etc. And all four of us are capable of also implementing our own designs. So working with Java code to some extent, implementing UIs, uh, working with CSS, CSS is, is what we do day to day. We have seen uh, more than 200 projects in the, in the team, so it gives a pretty good exposure to various interest industries that our customers are, are working working in. And the satisfaction score for uh, this year, or this far this year, has been pretty high, which I'm personally very, very proud of. Here at the end, I have linked few few different resources that, that we were referring to in the in the presentation. Thank you. All right. Thanks a lot, Jus. So that was very, very informative. And uh, yeah, and so we have a couple of questions and the, from the audience. So one question when you were discussing theme add-ons, mm -hmm. uh, are these theme colors accessible? Mm, we haven't done like a, a explicit audit on those theme add-ons. Uh, Basically, they are following, the Breeze team is following the Tailwind guidelines. Uh, Parity is following, following Goldman Sachs uh, variables. I now have to say that I think we did run them through a contrast checker and check that at least the like, main use cases are uh, ac accessible or fulfill the contrast, contrast requirements. Mm -hmm. But Lumo is Lumo. Lumo is yes. Yeah. We we actually did tweak those uh, Lumo colors a, a while back uh, to increase some of the contrast, especially with the with the like primary colors and, and the color text against against mm -hmm. background. So Lumo is our spearhead in in a way that it it, it is aimed to be uh, fully accessible. Of course, uh, then. Uh, we can discuss that. Is it, is it enough to fill the bare minimum level of contrast ratios and, and, and other means of accessibility? So we have been discussing that we could do a like a high contrast variant mm. of Lumo or enable the uh, high contrast modes uh, on, on Windows, especially that mm. would trigger slightly different set of set of styles. So that is also in the plans, but yeah, out of the box, Lomo should be really accessible. 
we had put a lot of effort in ensuring that all the focus uh, styles, all, all of those like different states are, are also accessible. Mm. Yeah. All right. And then there is another question hearing about the component. Yeah. So question from a Vaden 14 user, whether the design system publisher, the theming editor, and uh, the component locator are available for Vaden 14. Unfortunately, they are not, and there is no plan to backport them to Vaden 14. So for the moment, they are only available for Vaden 24, and specifically Vaden 24.1, which was uh, released today. Uh, and then another question, is it possible to style a part if ho hovering over on, on the parent of the part? So for example, I think from the code example here, it's uh, a grid, and if you hover, hover over the row, then uh, the cell is, is styled in a specific way. Yeah, that is a very good question. Now I have to say that on top of my mind, I would say it should work, but sometimes combining the part selector with uh, different states like the hover and active or with the pseudo selectors. I've seen some corner cases where those don't work as expected. So unfortunately, I, I, I don't recall on the top of my mind if that particular use case mm -hmm. works. Mm -hmm. All right. And yeah, yeah uh, another question, if there are any changes uh, with the way uh, styling works, with the newly introduced pre-compiled bundle. And as many may know, there is uh, recently with Vaden 24 and Vaden 24.1, there is a new pre-compiled bundle by which uh, Vaden applications can run without requiring running NPM or VIT, uh, which were necessary before. And this and the questions, as the, uh, the, the, the person asking the question has highlighted, this has implications on styling in that if you are styling in the main uh, file styles.css, things are picked up. But at the moment, there is if you have if you are targeting the internals of the of the component using the old uh, component specific style sheet, then this will require rebuilding of the bundle. So for that reason, it is recommended when actually is whenever possible, and that's highlighted in our documentation that whenever possible, please use the new part selector. That's easier to use, but also it gives you a bit more safety uh, in the future that if the internal details, implementation details of the button component changes, uh, you are still not affected by that because you're just dealing with this external API. For some components like Vaden charts, this it's not possible to actually use the part selector and for that component you still have to target the the component specific style sheet uh for the, so for these components for example if styling vaden charts for now we would have to still uh disable the pre-compiled bundle so that that will ensure that you don't have a long uh, cycles of rebuilding the bundle with every style change. However, there is enhancement ticket that uh, aims to make it possible to use the pre-compiled bundle without rebuilding the bundle, even if you're targeting the, the shadow DOM uh, directly of modern components. Uh, then there are also other questions. Let's see. Is there a way to share basic styles between different applications so that you are looking at the same? Yeah, basically, the what uh, in, in design system publisher uh, is not really bound to that, but in, in, in there we use a technique that you have a, a application defining the styles, then you package your team as a jar, uh, which can be shared between multiple multiple different applications. And your body design system publisher uh, project would be also one of the projects uh, using those style dependencies. So that, that way, your documentation will be using the exact same styles as your actual applications implementing them mm -hmm. or making use of the styles. So yes, and that is 
um, completely possible without having the or having to use the values it designs the publisher. So it is it's also featured in the, in the document as how to bundle your team as a as a jar. Yeah. Well. So that's a that's a good way of ensuring that if you have like suite of applications that you share the same styles, keeping them consistent and keeping them in sync. Yeah. Another question: Can you always customize the Lum the Lumus themes, or under which circumstances circumstances do you need to define your own themes? I don't think there ever is a need uh, to start from a, like a blank canvas. I'm, my recommendation would be to always based on based on Luma. Maybe the exception is that if what you're going for is so totally different from what Luma is, that basically you're re rewriting every single line of mm. CSS, then it might make sense to start from a blank canvas. But e even in that case, kind of you need to cover all the variants of all the components before having it like fully bulletproof. So even there, I would recommend on in like getting Luma as a, as a as your like starting point and then customizing your styles. Mm. And yeah, that's the way I would do it. Yeah, uh, we used to have a material team uh, still in the in the previous version of of Varin. It is still out there, but it hasn't hasn't really been maintained. And one of the reasons of that is that uh, you had to write all the styles twice. Now uh, that we are working on the on the like next iteration, the material tree, also that will be based on Lomo. So there is kind of a default fallback. Let's mm -hmm. say that we introduce a totally new component. A, we, we have like map component was one, one of the latest or a tab sheet. Mm -hmm. Uh, you wouldn't need to wait until the material team gets an update for that component, but it would be usable from the day one. It might not be like fully styled according to the material, but still you would have the benefit of, of having that. And it's kind of the same if you went the route of defining your completely own custom team, uh, you wouldn't have that like default, because basically the components don't look like anything without Lomo. There is no like light or or bare bones styles that would define some like layouting and mm -hmm. something. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Another question: Why did you use Alpha to create shades? This makes theme customization very difficult. Um, basically, in in uh, Lumo, how it's how it originally has been defined, I, I defined the primary color using the uh, HSLA value, which contains an alpha. And uh, the default in Lumo is defined in the same way. The alpha is, is used in, in internally in, in some of the components. So I will just notice that if I have like a hex value instead that doesn't have the transparency, at least I need to go back to those component styles and uh, tweak, it, tweak it to be Mm. different. Um, basically, I'm, I'm trying to align with how it was originally done in Lomo and using similar, similar, uh, defining the values in, in similar way. Mm -hmm. All right. Another question request, will there be mm -hmm. also a presentation about layouting pages as a whole, including flex boxes, responsive designs, etc., with CSS or by any other way? Well, uh, we don't have anything scheduled, but yeah. maybe uh, you, we can have something and you would also be... Yeah, why not? Good. We, yeah, to, we to also have some tooling in the making for yeah. for like uh, building UIs visually yes. in the browser as part of Vadicom. It's it? not in the making, it's today. You, if you go to start.vadicom, you can already see it. Yeah. It's called View Builder, and it allows you to create. It's another local tool that allows you to create views and layouts and prototypes just by dragging and dropping Vaden components. So you can already start doing this today, and, and your feedback is, is much appreciated about this. But we can also have something dedicated session showcasing this tool, we will certainly have a dedicated session showcasing this new tool and uh, also like maybe other tips yeah. and tricks about layouting. Yeah, and, and that one start uh, 
your builder goes to goes to some extent but of course we we could have a, a presentation on like i would like to do some something like uh taking few of the uh patterns and templates that we typically see uh in that are included with what in what an application and how to replicate those i don't know if it's going to be a webinar or, or like blog series or a tutorial or training material but yeah definitely something would be, would be useful yeah and one final question is it possible to use the custom icon into css like a background image uh possible to use the custom icon in in css like a, a background image um yes the svg images can be can be used as a as a like a background image i guess the most common way is that if you have like a, a black and white uh svg file you can use that as a a mask so a kind of the limitation of svg files is that if you don't load the svg in line you cannot change the color of the of the icon and a workaround for that is to have a div or any any other element that has a background color let's say red and then you define a mask with uh based on the svg image that kind of reveals the background color uh masked so then you change the background color so the color of the icon or the hole of the mask mm. uh that shows true changes so that that is one technique in, in like a way of using SVG icons in stars. Mm -hmm. All right, and one final, final question. Can you share the name again of the available UI builder? And it's called View Builder, and it's part of star.vaden.com. So if you just go to star.vaden, maybe you can already show this quickly. Yeah, let's see. What am I sharing a tab? Let's you can just share, share this instead. So this is start.button.com. And you have to be logged in. You need to be logged in. I am. Uh, here's two different two views that it initiates by default. We could add a new one. And there is now this, as of today, uh, this option, the visual view builder. And now we are uh, set into a, like a Visivic editor. We can say that we want a layout with two columns and a header. We start building that. And then we can start dragging and dropping components on the canvas. I can think of anything that would actually make sense. But yeah, we can style this. The two different styling, configure the sizes of, of these things and, and so on. So yes, please give it a try. And this is just a teaser. We are sure we'll have a dedicated session covering the view builder. Uh, yeah, and a dedicated session. All right, with that, thank you all for the participation and the questions. Uh, if you have any other questions, please reach out to us via the contact forms in vaden.com or uh, in Discord also. We, we are happy to answer your questions and getting your feedback at any time. Thank you all for the participation. Thank you.